All right, guys, we are loading into our game here. Spawning in the bottom right-hand corner of the map, we have our red Terran player playing for Team FXO, one of Europe's best StarCraft Brood War players and one of the best European Terrans in StarCraft II as well. We have Strelok. And his opponent in the top left-hand corner of the map. As our yellow Terran player from Team Millennium, someone who Lirlian has been casting for a while and has been doing very well recently. Hailing from France, it is Daishi. Yeah, so we saw uh, our first TVT series, which was, like you said, while we were on break, we discussed uh, the games that we saw between uh, between MMA and um, what was his name? MMA versus uh, Bunny. Yeah, of course. MMA versus Bunny, Herp Derp. Uh, we discussed that those TVTs were looking a little bit one-sided, that MMA's uh, game plan and micro and macro might just be uh, might just be a little bit better than bunnies. I don't think that's going to be the case in this series. I think oh, these yeah. two players might be playing completely different styles, and that's going to be very entertaining to watch. Yeah, we already see that we have. It looks like a, a gas or no, we are. It's the standard opener from Strelok going for the barracks, followed by the gas, where we have a gas first from Daishi. In Wings of Liberty, gas first was kind of like this build that was maybe seen one out of every 10 TVT, someone just randomly threw it in for wonky builds. But in Heart of the Swarm, gas first openers are, you know, fairly common. They're almost the standard. Most players do open with the barracks first, but we see gas first a lot more frequent in the current metagame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the gas mining going to be starting up uh, quite a bit earlier uh, for <coughs> uh, for our yellow Terran player, Daishi, in the top left, of course. The French player taking his gas early. Strelok mining a little bit later, not going to make that much, uh, not the biggest difference, of course, but uh, will differ in, let's say, the Reaper or, or the factory timing. The barracks is now finished up for Daishi, and he is going to move down with his SCV towards the expansion, just to check out, is there any kind of block here, any kind of proxies in place? No, there are not. He's just going to drop the, uh, the supply depot and complete the wall. Yep, and Factory gets scouted by Strelok, so he has an idea of what's going on on Daishi's end. I have a question yeah. for you, Lirlian. Um... How long has Daishi been on Millennium? Ooh. I'm putting you on the spot because I didn't know it. And apparently you didn't no. know it either. I forget when no. he joined. I, I think it was more recent than it wasn't, but I could be completely wrong on that uh, one. I, I feel like it's been relatively new too. Um, I cannot really comment on it though. Uh, Millennium is, is one of those teams that I don't really see as much from and their roster is, is changing quite frequently i have a i have a feeling i mean uh oh, okay he left uh, eclipsia in october 28th of 2012 to join mm -hmm. millennium so uh, a little over six months he's been on millennium okay so he's been on there a decent while yeah has been on their squad for some while now so he has been able to train uh train with the best so to say the the millennium squad currently consisting out of actually uh, quite a lot of players They've got Adele Scott, Die Star, Feast, 4GG, Ghosty User, Kleenex, and Madalisk. I believe Madalisk is one of their latest uh, pickups. Uh, yeah. Is a female player that's doing quite well for herself. I actually played a few times against Madalisk uh, on the ladder. Cool story, did, right? Yeah. Did you forget her? I forgated her. I forgated her so hard. <laughs> Good call, man. Good call. We actually see a blue flame Hellion opening here from Strelok that just goes to what we discussed earlier. He loves his mech play. He's going to do as much harassment with this. He's going to get more additional factories down. His command center is just about to finish. Already going up to that second gas where on uh, Daishi's end, he's just going for a, a standard, you know, just marine Hellion drop. Going to get two medevacs out. Uh, second one's going to be a little bit delayed, but it's going to be rallied across the map. First medevac will be filled with these marines. And actually, Hellions are just going to go for a run by. SCB does get inside, sees the medevac moving out as well as the Battle Hellions. And what this is going to do for Strelok is just allow him to go on the defensive. He's going to sit in his home. He's not going to move out on the map, be harassed or harass at all. Uh, and he's just going to turtle up as much as possible. And he really can't do much with his army right now anyway, so he'd be sitting home uh, no matter what he saw. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Strelok would be at home trying to defend. We see the Manavex now approaching the cliff. Is going to try to ferry these units up there. Wants to get all his Marines and all his Hellions there before Strelok starts to engage. Strelok is actually oh, not see gonna... it. Is it just outside of his vision? It's just oh, it outside is. of vision. Now he Here sees it, but the Marines are already on the high ground. 
Blue Flame has finished up. That's going to help Stradlock out a little bit. But his unit count is much lower. He's going to be forced to pull some SCVs. And a lot of SCVs are getting toasted here. The Blue Flame is doing its work though. But the medevac healing away at those Marines. It looks like that it's just barely going to go in favor of Jadeshi overall. When we look at that supply count. Uh, Stradlock will be able to clean up. Nice repair on that Hellion. Going to be able to save it. Good good call there from Strelok, but if you look at that income tab, 27 Ooh. to 17, nine SCVs have been killed so far in this attack. Uh, really well done there by Daishi. Puts the supply 44 to 33. Yeah, definitely good attack there by our yellow uh, French town player. He's going to be very happy with the amount of damage he's done there, but uh, we were going to get in, in a situation that we've seen in our last TVT too, where the the guy that took damage from the initial harassment had his expansion done earlier so might be able to catch up in the workout is that marine gonna block the oh i think that marine was trying to get in position to block the orbital command from landing for another few seconds but it was slightly too far to the right so that marine uh, pretty much dying a pointless death now important thing to note is that jay she scouted the blue flame but you, you know we are we everyone already knows that Sherlock has this really cool mech style but this kind of just confirms that he's probably going to be they're committing to this route. So it, we'll, we'll be seeing a, a distinct decision in Daishi's uh, build order now. Going for the more Marine Marauder heavy style and actually getting out a Raven as well. Interesting choice from Daishi right now to spend that gas that way. <laughs> Both players actually getting a Raven on the other side of the field. Uh, Strelok's also getting a Raven. So how is that going to aid the defense of Daishi? Not so much. He doesn't have anything uh, in position right now. Where's that medevac? There's the medevac we're out of seeing... Strelok. Sorry, uh, we're seeing mech versus mech right now, actually. Yeah, we are. That's um, pretty rare in my opinion. Um, you see it very rarely, as most players are just more comfortable with the bio style. It's easier to play mm -hmm. the bio style with the current medevac. Uh, what we can expect to see this game is just lots of Battle Hellion drops. I mean, that's just, you know, the TBT has become really chaotic in the current metagame. And, and until Terrans learn how to use turrets, where to put sensor towers, you know, those mineral lines are constantly being harassed. And we still have actually seen the additional uh, factories from Strelok. He's actually pumping out Banshees right now. <laughs> yeah, he's staying on one factory for a very long time. Still no armory added on either we're gonna have to start thinking about upgrades as well upgrades very important especially when your opponent's doing the same sort of strategy with the same sort of unit composition having better upgrades is going to make all the difference and neither player has committed to an armory yet daishi is committing to a lot of factories first so dropping down another two so he's already up to four bar uh, four factories in a second where strelok he's still on one he's getting a third base before getting a second factory wow that's greedy yeah, well, I mean, you have to take into account that he had that economic damage really early on, so he's mm -hmm. going to have to come back from that. But you're right, you know, the, this third command center, uh, third command center is just actually finishing for uh, Daishi, so his third base is going to be started sometime soon as well. But still, like you're right, no factories. We finally see the first armory on the way for Daishi, getting turrets in his main base. Um, did he scan the Banshees? I don't know if he did or not. Uh, but it's also just helpful to defend against those Battle Hellion drops. Also a Whittle Mine in the main base. And yes, Jellux, you know, his economy is slower right now and his production is much slower. And there mm -hmm. we go, finally seeing the first two additional factories. Yeah, we also see a scan by Daishi. So if he didn't, he was obviously expecting that Banshees were making its way across the map towards his base. Now he knows for certain that at least one Banshee is coming, but it's just not not just one Banshee. It's two Banshees, three Vikings, Matavac, and another Viking struggling behind that. A lot of um, Hellions are here too. This looks to be a very heavy pressure build by Strelok. Focused on well, those, those two uh, Banshees in the air, they're definitely going to have to make the difference, but Daishi just finished up a turret in time. And he's got a Widow Mine there, plus he's got the Raven. Not as many Vikings, but I don't know if he's actually going to go in favor of Strahd. He's just a nice initial volley. Going to force the pickup on this command center and send a Medivac straight into the main base to drop off those four Hellings. Medivac is just sitting underneath this turret, so the Hellings will get out of there. Will the Medivac live? And it does fall. Hellings not only really being microed at that natural base, the, uh, nat the third base is still being trolled. Going into the middle line, how many SCVs can Strahd kill? Doesn't look like he's gotten very many. It looks like two have fallen so far. Uh, th a third falls at the end there, so not the best damage Sherlock could have been hoping for. And you know, there's really nothing he can do at this point. With three siege shanks here, the turret, and the Whittle Mine, he has to back off. 
Mm -hmm. He has not been killing that many SCVs, but he's been producing SCVs constantly himself. He's only down by four workers right now. And of course, that's also a result, as we see a few of the trapped aliens of Stralok get taken out, a result of the fact that Stralok got such late additional production facilities and his army supply is oh so low right now. That's the reason he's been able to catch up in economy a little bit. They're going to have a third base around the same time. And the worker count is now close to equalized. It's just the army supply that Sherlock has to start working on really hard right now. He needs those siege tanks so badly. Yeah, if you take a look at the structures tab, it's five factory supply. Both players have the one armory. Um, so, I mean, finally Sherlock's caught up on production. But you're right, he delayed it for so long. And Daishi, he's going to hit max much faster than Sherlock. I mean, they have the same mm -hmm. production facilities. Uh, if, if Daishi does a, you know, 200, 200 max push, I don't know what... You know, Stalk can do to stop it. He's also going to be behind on upgrades, whereas plus one attacks just about the finish for Daishi. Yeah, you're right. If Daishi would hit that max 200, 200 push, which it looked like looks like he's not even going to wait for, he's going to hit his plus one mech timing attack. Now moving out to the middle of the map, hoping to deny the third base of Stralok. That's definitely what is on his mind right now. Stralok sending out a. Oh, actually, I thought that might have been a dropship. Oh, there's a dropship behind there. A single <laughs> Hellion moving along for fun. Yeah, that drop, you know, it's, Stralok really wants it to do a lot of damage here. going to start working on these rocks. Take a look at the important numbers here. Hellion count, 20 to 9 in favor of Daishi. Siege tank count, 7 to 5, with the two Thors mixed in on Daishi's end. Um, battle Hellion count is in favor of Stralok, but I really don't think it matters uh, having the three additional battle Hellions when you're down 11 uh, regular Hellions and siege tanks as well. I don't know if this... I don't know, Stark's gonna have to have the best positioning to hold this. The Banshees are gonna help out a lot though. I think he's got the Sky Superiority. Yeah, he does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he does. Is that gonna help him and make the difference here? Daishi is pushing him with this plus one finished up. His Siege Tanks are not even in Siege mode. Strelok's Siege Tanks are in Siege mode. He does have the Bellions, Hellions, uh, the Banshees overhead, doing a lot of damage to the Siege Tanks, but now they're just starting to take some fire from the Vikings and the Thors. And it looks like Daishi might be able to break Strelok here. There's too many, there's too much stuff, too much well grit of well upgraded mech here for Daishi, and he's now gonna take siege positions outside the natural of Strelok, and he's gonna be forced to GG out. Daishi goes ahead and takes the first game.